Hi, this is Mike Trujillo from Cakewalk, and in this exercise we'll be setting up your audio interface and other important settings to get you started working in Sonar. First I'm going to select Options from the toolbar and select Audio from the drop-down menu. Next I'm going to select the Advanced tab and select the Driver Mode from the drop-down menu. In most cases, when using a non-consumer interface, ASIO is the optimal driver to use for the best results. In some cases, where you're using an onboard sound card, say for instance on a laptop, you might want to select one of the other driver modes. You can experiment with these other driver modes if you're experiencing problems with the ASIO setting. Next, let's go to the File System section and first make sure that the Enable Read and Write caching are unchecked unless you're experiencing problems with your system. Then we're going to adjust the playback and record buffer size. This will affect the time it takes to start playback and recording once engaged. You can experiment with the settings and for faster drives like solid state drives, you may be able to go as low as 64. For most modern computers and drives though, 128 is a good size to start with. If you are experiencing any pops or clicks when you start and stop playback, you can remedy this by adding a slight fade to the start and stop here. Choosing a 40 millisecond fade on the start and a 20 millisecond fade on the stop should take care of your problems, but you may want to experiment with settings to find out what's best for your system. Next, let's go to the Drivers tab and make sure that our interface is selected in the Input and Output sections. If you're using multiple devices, they may show up here. Only select the device you will be using to avoid any complications. Now we'll go to the General tab and select our interface as the Playback Timing Master and the Record Timing Master. For the ultimate in audio resolution when working in Sonar, select the 64-bit Double Precision Engine setting here. If you choose not to monitor through the 64-bit engine, you can still use this on your mixdowns as it is available in the Export section. For more information on Sonar's 64-bit mix engine, go to cakewalk.com where you can find topics on the forum and videos on this feature. The stereo panning loss setting allows you to choose whether the volume will remain the same across the left and right panning field or if a selectable decrease in volume will be applied. You can experiment with this setting to choose which works best for you. Also located in the General tab is the Sampling Rate Default setting for any new projects you will do in Sonar. Now we'll adjust the audio buffer size in the Mixing Latency section. Latency is best described as a delay between when you make a sound and when you hear it in your speakers. Depending on which driver mode you're using, the settings in this section will differ. Since we chose the ASIO driver earlier, we'll need to hit the ASIO panel button to open the settings box. The settings box will appear different depending on which interface you are using, but the basic concept remains the same. By moving the slider to the left or right, we can choose a smaller or larger audio buffer size. Moving further to the right, we'll select a larger buffer resulting in more latency or delay. Experiment with this setting to find a comfortable amount of latency when recording audio or playing a VST instrument. Okay, now that we have our interface set up, the next thing you'll want to do is go to the Options menu and select Global in the drop-down. Select the Folders tab and choose a Default Projects folder. This will be the folder that opens when you choose to open a project. Now we're going to go to the Audio Data tab and select a Global Audio folder which should also be in your Default Projects folder you selected in the last step. You can also choose to have specific audio folders per project by checking the option in the Per Project Audio section. This is checked by default and is the recommended setting for working with Sonar. Lastly, we're going to the File Bit Depth section to select our record bit depth. This should match your interface's bit depth, which is typically 24-bit. After taking these steps to set up your interface, now it's time to have some fun and immerse yourself in the world of music creation with Sonar. 